Can we really regrow cartilage? Do you want to know if cartilage can actually regenerate? That's the question we're going to tackle today. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. John Chuback. If you're new here, welcome. Cartilage damage is one of the most frustrating medical problems, whether it's from arthritis, a sports injury, or simply the wear and tear of aging. The loss of cartilage leads to pain, stiffness, and loss of mobility. Many patients dream of a day when cartilage can simply grow back, but is that science or fiction? Is it even possible? In this video, we'll look at what cartilage is, why it matters, why it doesn't heal on its own, the surgical approaches that exist today, the claims around supplements and natural remedies, and the exciting research happening in regenerative medicine. What exactly is cartilage? Cartilage is a specialized type of connective tissue that provides structure and cushioning in the body. There are three main types, elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage, and hyaline cartilage. The one most relevant to joint health is hyaline cartilage, also called articular cartilage. Hyaline cartilage covers the ends of the bones where they meet in joints such as the knee or the hip or the shoulder. Its surface is smooth and glossy and very resilient, allowing bones to glide over one another with minimal friction. It also acts as a shock absorber, protecting joints from the forces of walking, running, and lifting. The key point is that cartilage is avascular. It has no direct blood supply. That means nutrients and oxygens can only reach cartilage cells, chondrocytes, by diffusion from the surrounding fluids. This severely limits the tissue's ability to repair itself. In fact, after puberty, once growth plates have closed, cartilage has virtually no capacity to regenerate in adults. If you want to picture what cartilage looks like, think about about the end of a chicken drumstick. That smooth, shiny layer that you see is cartilage. Once it's scraped off, it doesn't grow back. So why do people want to regrow cartilage? The two biggest drivers are trauma and arthritis. Trauma, for example, a sports injury, a car accident, or other direct damage can leave cartilage defects that don't heal on their own. Even young athletes develop long-term problems after cartilage injuries. Over time, cartilage thins and wears away due to osteoarthritis. Without cartilage, bones rub directly against each other, causing pain and stiffness, and swelling and decreased mobility. Because cartilage damage has such a dramatic impact on the quality of life, patients are eager for solutions. Many hope that supplements, injections, or new technologies can provide a way to regenerate the lost tissue. Cartilage's inability to regenerate comes down to its biology. Chondrocytes, the specialized cells in cartilage, are very sparse and they're embedded in a dense matrix of collagen and proteoglycans. These cells maintain the tissues but divide very slowly and have little capacity to organize new growth. Other tissues like skin, bone, and liver regenerate readily because they have abundant blood supply and access to stem cells. Cartilage, unfortunately, does not. So once damaged, the loss is essentially permanent without surgical intervention. This is why conditions like arthritis are progressive. Without intervention, cartilage loss accumulates over time, leading to worsening pain and disability. Because cartilage does not heal on its own, surgeons have developed methods to repair or replace damaged areas. These techniques don't truly regenerate original cartilage, but can improve function and reduce pain. Microfracture, drilling, and abrasion arthroplasty. These procedures involve disrupting the bone beneath the damaged cartilage called the subchondral bone to stimulate repair. In microfracture, tiny holes are created in the bone. In drilling, a surgical drill penetrates the surface. In abrasion, in arthroplasty, the bone surface is roughened up. In each case, bone marrow elements are able to seep into the defect and form repair tissue. However, this tissue is fibrocartilage, which is more like scar tissue. Fibrocartilage provides temporary cushioning, but it's not as durable or resilient as natural hyaline cartilage. Patients often experience symptom relief, but results decline over time. Now let's talk about autologous chondrocyte implantation, or ACI and MACI. In more advanced techniques, surgeons can remove a small sample of the patient's own cartilage, send it to a lab, and grow millions of cells, believe it or not. These cells are then re-implanted into the damaged area. When combined with a supportive matrix, this is known as MACI, Matrix Assisted Autologous Chondrocyte Implantation. This approach aims to restore cartilage with tissue closer to the original. It has shown promise in carefully selected patients, but remains very expensive, technically challenging, and limited to focal 
physical defects. Next, let's talk about cartilage transplantation. Cartilage can be transplanted from one area to another. In what we call an autograft, cartilage is taken from a less weight-bearing part of the patient's own joint. In an allograft, cartilage is taken from a deceased donor. Both methods can restore damaged surfaces, but availability is limited and results vary. The important takeaway is that these procedures repair or replace cartilage. They do not regrow it in the way that patients often imagine. Now let's talk about supplements and natural remedies. If you search online, you'll see countless claims about supplements that supposedly regrow cartilage. Popular examples include glucosamine, chondroitin, collagen, turmeric, MSM, and even shark cartilage. The evidence tells a different story. While some of these supplements may reduce pain or improve function in osteoarthritis patients, none has been shown in rigorous clinical studies to actually regenerate cartilage tissue. The most they may offer is symptom relief, and even then, results are inconsistent. It's easy to see why people are hopeful, but here's a simple test. If a pill could regrow cartilage, it could also regrow a lost finger. Since that is impossible, claims about cartilage regeneration through supplements should be viewed with a lot of skepticism. Now we come to stem cells and PRP, where the research is actually headed. Platelet-rich plasma, PRP, is created by spinning down the patient's own blood and concentrating the platelets, which are then injected back into the joint. Platelets release growth factors that can help reduce inflammation. Some studies show PRP can improve pain and mobility in arthritis patients. However, PRP does not regrow cartilage. Its benefits appear to be temporary symptom relief. Now let's address stem cells. Stem cells are cells that can transform into many different tissue types. In laboratory settings, researchers have successfully coaxed stem cells into becoming cartilaginous-like tissue. For example, Stanford researchers recently discovered methods to regrow cartilage under highly controlled conditions. But in human patients, simply injecting stem cells into joints has not been shown to regenerate durable, functional cartilage. At best, stem cell injections may improve symptoms by reducing inflammation, but they do not rebuild joint surfaces. So what about the future of cartilage regeneration? Regenerative medicine is one of the most exciting fields of research today. Scientists are exploring tissue engineering, 3D printed scaffolds, and advanced biomaterials to one day make cartilage regeneration possible. At Yale University and other institutions, new techniques are being studied that may eventually transform treatment for arthritis and joint injuries. For now though, no food, supplement, or injection has been proven to regrow cartilage in adults. Surgery remains the only option to repair or replace damaged cartilage, and even these techniques have limitations. So can cartilage regenerate? In children, there may be some limited potential. In adults, unfortunately, the answer is no, at least not naturally. Surgical methods can repair or replace cartilage to some extent, but they cannot recreate the original tissue perfectly. Supplements and natural remedies may ease symptoms, but they do not regrow tissue. PRP and stem cells are promising, but remain experimental. For now, the best strategies for protecting your joints include staying active, maintaining a healthy weight, strengthening the muscles that support your joints, managing arthritis symptoms with proven treatments, and considering surgery when appropriate. If you found this video helpful, please share it with somebody that you care about. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe down below. I'm Dr. John Chuback, board certified cardiovascular surgeon, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.